Colleen was born, she was diagnosed with osteogenesis imperfecta. It is better known as the brittle bone disease. Her bones are very fragile and they can fracture easily. Colleen had a wonderful personality as a baby. Began giggling, smiling, always happy. She was just a baby to us and we never thought much other than she was perfect. Colleen is a, a regular kid. She has two siblings. We always consider all three children to be alike and uh, treat them equally. I like her because she's funny. <laughs> make them laugh, make them laugh. I've been swimming since I was three, three years old. Colleen goes to the Easter Seal swim program once a week. It's really great for her because swimming helps her stay active and strong. And by staying active and strong, her bones have a chance to grow. When Colleen goes to Easter Sail Camp, she has the time of her life. Swimming is my absolutely, positively favorite thing to do. Colleen is a very good swimmer. She has a disability, but it doesn't stop her or phase her. What goes through my head is arms up and tucked in head. Just go for it. I have a lot of friends. Two of them are here, Karen and Deanna. The kids, um just really look up to her. They really want to be independent like she is. All right. The best thing about camp no. would be hanging out with your friends and using basketball hoops. No matter who says I can't, I go do it anyway. <laughs> and it ends up I can do it. I have to thank Sonny, and I have to thank everybody here for just being here. As you might have seen from the video that dates back to 1993, Easter Seals has been part of my family um, since even before 1993, basically since I was a toddler. And I have to give Easter Seals, which is all of you, the credit for who I am today. And, you know, I'm, I'm now 30 years old, and... You know, life is a complicated, rocky journey. And with a disability, sometimes they throw a couple extra rocks in there. And I think most of you would agree with me that adolescence is sometimes the hardest part. Adolescence is a time where we really reach out to find ourselves, where we start to own our identity. We start to say who we are. And even me, who sometimes comes across as really confident, when I was an adolescent, sometimes having a disability made me kind of afraid to own my identity. My disability is a big part of who I am. That's not a bad thing. Because sometimes disability has a negative stigma that it's almost like we're afraid to be disabled or disability isn't normal or it's just a bad thing. And imagine growing up with a disability. That's kind of dangerous for forming a positive identity, right? Yeah. So fortunately, um, I was able to find opportunities that allowed me to prove that I was able to give back, that I was able to do something, that I was needed in this world, that I belonged in this world, and that I could contribute to this world. And I have to thank Easter Seals, Massachusetts, because they provided a lot of those opportunities for me. So now, yes. So now, now that I'm a professional, paying taxes, I have the fortunate opportunity to address those issues that adolescents will have if they have disabilities. We all know, I don't need to spit out statistics, we all know that they're depressing and sad. There's a lot of people with disabilities who aren't working. There's a lot of kids with disabilities who drop out of high school. There's a lot of not confident people with disabilities out there. So in Massachusetts, what we're doing is we're really giving so many opportunities. We're flooding them with opportunities to give back to see what they can do. Because unfortunately, having a disability, you're often the recipient of service. You're often the one to be there to say, you know, or to be told, this is what you do. This is what you can't do. This is who you are. Unfortunately, there aren't enough opportunities out there for kids with disabilities or adults who've recently acquired disabilities to be told or for them to discover on their own what they can do, how they can contribute. Belonging is a basic human need. And unfortunately, what we're all working for every day is to have higher inclusion so that people with disabilities are, they feel belonging. 
So I'd like to tell you some of the projects that since 2007, when I became East Seals Youth Services Director, I've been able to work with multiple different programs, including our summer camp overnight program that includes kids with and without disabilities, our leaders in training program at camp that gives teenagers an opportunity to work at the camp that they grew up at. Maybe they work in the kitchen. Maybe they make a garden. Maybe they work with the kids. They all have individual interests and abilities that we work to make sure that they can contribute to the camp that they love. Because they love Easter Seals. And we want to be able to that they can give back. I also, we also, through our youth leadership program, do a lot of community service. We bring the kids together, have pizza parties, have them hang out, have them get to know each other. And then we ask them, how do you want to change the world? What's wrong with it? What's the solution to fixing that problem in the world? A year or so ago, one of the issues that we heard over and over and over again was that kids with disabilities are often bullied, are often teased, and they're often not treated right. So, you know, we, we let them say what these problems are, and then we said, how do we fix it? And the overwhelming response was, we fix it by increasing the awareness. Let's teach people about the disabilities rights movement. It's a rich, rich history that people with disabilities have had. The disability rights movement has shown the struggles and the victories, but unfortunately, you can sit in a public school classroom and you may never hear about the story of FDR and how he had to hide a huge part of him, his disability. Some kids don't know who Justin Dart is, one of the founders of the Americans with Disabilities Act. So because of that, the kids came together. And we talked about establishing a disability history month in Massachusetts, an opportunity for teachers and schools to recognize disability rights movement, to recognize the history of people with disabilities. And we had to do that by influencing our state legislator. So what we did was we contacted some legislatures that some of the kids know or some of the East Seals knew, and the kids, not me, presented their solution. And fortunately, we got a sponsor to a bill to establish Disability History Month. Then the kids went to work. They got on Facebook, they friended their legislators, they asked them for their support. Soon we had over 30 co-sponsors. Then we asked all the other stakeholders, other disability organizations, voters, other people. We had a lot of support. We had a rally at our state house in Massachusetts and had over 100 people come. And the kids felt like they did something positive to change the world, especially for kids younger than them. When it went to a hearing, um, the kids came and testified. And it was pretty amazing, the stories that they had to say. And it made it so that the committee that was um, going to approve the piece of legislation, they voted on it unanimously. Once they heard from these kids, who without the opportunity to speak out to them might not have, it was a no-brainer. Of course we should have Disability History Month. We have, dis we have history months for other oppressed populations. Why shouldn't it be people with disabilities? So in August of 09, it was established and became law. And the kids really felt proud of that. But of course, because they truly care about this cause, they quickly told me, that's not enough. <laughs> we need it to be so that when the kids are learning social studies, they're really learning about these stories. So now we're kind of working a little bit with seeing if we can change some of the frameworks for the education to include this more formally. And kids with disabilities themselves in our program are going to their schools and asking their principals if they can have disability awareness presentations that they're a part of, where they're saying the history of the disability rights movement, where they're saying the ADA has made such changes. Um, let's make sure that we make sure that people with disabilities, you know, can be included after those changes. So it's been a really, it's been a privilege to be able to see these kids blossom, 